Hey guys, welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. Today I'll be redoing my start UI. Um, I'll also be adding some things to it like animation and sounds. So let's get right into it. So let's start with adding the actual background. So go into your starter GUI, add your screen GUI, can name it whatever you want, doesn't matter. So I'm trying to name it um, start GUI. Inside it, you can enter a frame. Yeah, let me just do this for a sec. So for that frame, you need basically to take the whole screen. So under the position, actually the position will be zero, like so, and uh, zero zero. And then for this uh, size, has to be uh, offset of zero and a scale of one for both. So you can fill up the whole screen. Also make sure to go into your screen UI and untick or sorry, take back this. And yeah, so now go back to your frame. Let's make the color a bit more pleasing to look at. I, for example, I really like the um, the gray, dark gray kind of. So now you have your frame. You can enter a text button. You can center in the middle and make it a bit bigger than this, so like 300 by 100. The position will be point, sorry, uh, point 0.5. And negative 150, and then here will be 5, and then negative 50. So it will be 0.5 for the scale, and then for the offset, the negative of the offset in size divided by 2. So 300 divided by 2 is 150, that's the negative. And same thing for the y. And that should center it properly on uh, all the screens. So now what you can do is you can change the font. I like code. So you keep it as code. Um, you can also make, say make it say play or something. I uh, make sure to set the text scale. So actually like scales to the whole button. And if you want to, you can use some um, button um, styles. That's a, that's available for you. So once you have that done, you can bring in the button to. It doesn't matter, but we rename it because for good habits. So let's rename it start button, for example. Then inside it, insert a script. So make sure it's a local script. You can name this for whatever you want as well. I can name it um, button script. All right, so now let's put this back on the sides and the site coding. So first things first, you want to start with some, you know, some communication telling you what the script does. So we're trying to say, um, handles start menu for now. You can you can explain more if you want. So I'll start with the variables. So, uh, so variables. So we need the button, which is script parent, because this is script refers to the actual script, and the parent go, goes to the its parent property, which in this case the start button over here. All right. So once you access the, the parent, we can also access the Actual frame, so that will be um, or should you say button dot parent, or you can also do. Actually, in most cases it will be the button inside the actual frame. So I'm gonna leave it as this. You can do script dot parent dot parent if you want to access the actual frame. That works too. So let's add some functions. So I already, I already did this before, so I know what I'm doing. So uh, you can add a function called fade out. It's gonna take in an object, um, and then inside the function, the for loop, say like new transparency equal to so it starts as zero because transparent the zero transparency means it's visible, it goes to one, and it goes up by zero point one each time. Uh, let's wait point one seconds and then set the transparency of the object. Or background transparency to the new transparency. So once you have this, uh, we can go ahead now and write our event. So let's have an event. So once the button is clicked, so we can use the mouse button on click um, event. Alright, so uh, what we can do now is we can tween the actual button, so she or move the button outside the window. 
So let's uh, get the positions. So let's say x scale, let's say x offset, let's say y scale, oops, I need to do this, y scale, and same thing, y offset. Let's do this in right here. So you take the button, hit the position, x is the x axis, and then leave the scale. And it's mostly the same thing for all of them. This one is just going to be negative 1. So y here, uh, this will be the offset, and this will be the offset as well. So, so what we're doing is basically we're accessing and storing all these positions over here. So all these, except for the y scale, because we're going to um, change it to our needs, right? So now we can let's declare a new variable called new position. So new position. So new pose is equal to new dimension two dot new because it's a table and so if you can see here it takes x scale x offset y scale y offset so x scale um, x offset that same thing y scale then y offset so uh, actually oh yeah also make sure to have a local so now if you notice we're basically doing the same thing this is the x scale x offset y scale y offset we're just moving out of the screen so this would be the new position right here so since the y scale would be negative one it would be up here somewhere so what i'm going to do is get it back and let's go back to scripting so now we actually got to tween it so let's do um tween or by tween i mean move basically so let's tween the button. So button use the function called tween positions, built-in function for the GI elements. Um, so we basically use the new pose, and then we do out. That's the easing style or direction. I'm not sure. I should kind of forgot. Quad. Just use those for now. Um, it's gonna take one second. This this is how many, how how much time it takes to reach that new position that we declared. So I'm going to make it one second, and it can be overridden, and just leave this as true. Um, you can look in the wiki if you want to, if I know what that does, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So now we gotta, uh, so now we gotta, gotta make a way so that we know when this ends. So the best solution I can do right now is, let's have done is equal to false. Oh yeah, make sure it's local. Uh, let's say um, local function ended. Well, this is called, so I say done is equal to true. This is just to indicate indicate uh, when the tweening is finished. Okay, and then we can use the callback function over here, ended. Now let's go down here and then let's wait for it to end. So let's say uh, wait for tweening. So let's repeat that's like wait 0.1 seconds and then until done okay and then once it's done we can go ahead and so this right now when it gets it gets to here it should be out of the screen so all we gotta do is make the frame fade out and if you remember we have, we have a function called fade out so all we gotta do is do oh, oops um fade out the frame so i gotta do fade out like so and pass in the frame that we have declared up there okay and if any, everything goes right then go back and let's try let's try it for now see if everything going right nothing is breaking so we press play and there we go all right so what you can do also is add sounds which I'm going to do right now. So we can go ahead and go into your toolbox here, go to audio, and you can see like a click sound kind of thing. So I'm going to click. Uh, ah, that's a good sound. So let's use this click sound, and so we can name it like click sound if you want. So actually, yeah, make sure to make a click sound, so we can that we can use it. So now, um, it's in the started UI. You can actually move it inside. 
it's on the button itself as well so it's just easier to access and then you know, all you gotta do is uh, come here and you can say click sound is equal to the button right so the button that we have declared here and then you gotta wait for it so wait for child and then the name so click sound so what this this function does is wait for the child in this case this is a child right and we're waiting for a click sound which is this right here so once this loads in um it's going to set it to this variable if that makes sense and if it doesn't load in it's gonna give a warning i'm gonna make it three seconds all right so now that we did this when we win the uh, so when the button gets clicked, we need to play the sound. So what we gotta do is play sound, and it's as simple as doing click sound, play, and this plays the sound. This function here plays the sound. So now you can go back, then play again. So you can do this, and there you go. Now uh, one last thing is. Uh, is a thing that happens where if you die, it resets. So the fastest way, first off, let me try it again. So it goes away, and then if it's a one one or one way, or it's a one time thing, and then say so you die, this happens. It comes back up. So let's say you actually wanna make it come once and never again. There's two ways you can do this. First way is to use a script, and the second way is just to un uncheck this in the screen GUI that we have. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can now go and play like so. It's gonna load in, and then you can test it for yourself where you're gonna reset. There we go, and it doesn't come back up. This is filtering enabled, so first it doesn't matter if it's filtering enabled or not, so it will work either way. But it is compatible with filtering enabled, and Yashi also works uh, in game. Uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.